I've already spent close to a thousand hours in Satisfactory, even completing the crazy phase 4 numbers of early access. And now we have version 1 coming in a few days, on September 10th. And I'll be honest, I thought version 1 wouldn't be a big deal. Oh boy was I wrong. Coffee stand, studio videos and marketing have always been amazing for me. But for version 1, I think they've outdone themselves. I mean, look at those craziness. The toilet flush that has been a meme forever. Here Snot is supposed to explain to us what's happening, but you know, the sound, you can't hear him. In order to convert one resource to another, you need one extra little thing. Some little, little secret thing you need to put in there. And that is re So by combining iron ore, for instance, with re you can create sulfur. Laser is back. Holy shit, lasers? Anyway, while those videos are great, they couldn't have done it without the whole dev team creating so many new gameplay loops and content. So yes, let's be clear, I'm convinced that version 1 will be very different from early access. Okay, maybe not for the first few hours, right? But after that, and especially the mid to end game is gonna be completely different. They are adding so much, we won't be able to talk about it all without the video being super long, but I want to make sure that you know about this. So I'm going to give you, you know, the top things to know. So hopefully you're going to be as excited as I am for version 1. So first of all, very practically in terms of content, they are adding a new tier 9 with multiple research to unlock and a phase 4 for the elevator. But the important thing here is that it's not just a few new recipes using you know the same things we already know and putting them in different uh, configuration to do something new no it's actually new buildings with a ton of new recipe like everything in that tier 9 and this phase 4 everything there is new there's basically nothing from uh, the past that you're using we'll talk about some of these a bit later then number two they have now a full story from the start to the end of the game it won't be mandatory if you don't like stories it's fine they've made it sure that you you don't really need to interact with it if you don't want to but if you do want to it's gonna bring a whole new experience to the game number three then we have mark six belt and elevators we're talking about 1200 of resources per minute this has now been confirmed fully we'll be able with this to take full advantage of the mark 3 miners that are overclocked on pure nodes right before we were limited to 700 and something now it's moving to 1200 this is a huge increase right so there's many places in the world where you're going to be able to do a lot more with you know the same nodes with the same factories then as i said we have new buildings the converter for example is a new one with this building you're going to be able to transfigure some ores into other so for example we can take some coal ingots as well as something new which is made out of sand or and you get a new ingot for example let's say you, again you transform your coal into sulfur this way you can potentially simplify and gain logistic by a lot right of course at the cost of more complex production chains and more energies and also a bit of reduced output so this will enable you indeed again to simplify probably a lot of your logistic but it can also enable you to do things uh, bigger and better than before let's say for example for your nuclear facilities before we were limited by the amount of uranium on the map now if you can transfigure things into new uranium then you can make even more and that's not all this converter will be able to also do other things in particular it is the first building that can create something out of nothing <laughs> so it is a building where even without giving it any input it's going to create an output this what I call blue juice, I forgot the official name, uh, don't really need to remember it. Then we have another second building completely new, the quantum encoder. Looks huge, looks very beautiful too, and it's a whole new building with uh, several new recipes. An important thing about those two new buildings, by the way, is that they're said to have big energy fluctuations, which may require us to have a lot more batteries or at least a lot more buffer in our production of electricity. I mentioned new recipes. I'm not going to go into all of the details of what's needed for what and uh, exactly, right? because we can see that clearly when the game will release. But again, there is those SAM ingots 
there is those fixic ingots that will enable you to make fixit trigons. Then there's time crystals that you're gonna make out of diamonds. And again, other things, right? It's not just diamonds, it's diamonds and other things. Um, dark matter residue, excited photomotic matter, which I think is the blue juice I mentioned before. The neural quantum processor, the superposition oscillator, the AI expansion server, and more. So again, a lot of new things for us to do here. Then there's also big changes to some of the gameplay that has been there for a while. For example, we still have the biomass burner now, but now we're going to be able to feed automatically things into the biomass burner with a belt and I think also a pipe input. So that could open again some new possibilities. Similarly, power shards. You could make them before by finding slugs. You can still find slugs, but now we can also actually build them. We can automate the production of power shards, which means that you could think now, you know, to have a great production of power shards that is automated, and then you could think to make whole factories with power shards and therefore overclocking everywhere. Then something that definitely took me by surprise is there's a new power source, or to be more precise, a new, let's say, nuclear steps. We had already the uranium and the plutonium, now we have the fixonium, <laughs> which is, as we've been told, not as good as the plutonium rods in terms of, let's say, energy output, but it doesn't create any radioactive waste. Now, the reality is the way to see it is a bit like the end of the chain. You know that to make plutonium, the best way is to have uranium waste. Now, this is going to be the same where the best way, or I think the only way to make fusonium is going to be to have plutonium waste. So it's basically you're going to have your uranium production with a couple you know, of uh, nuclear reactors. And then next to it, you're going to refine the waste from that first into the plutonium rods, which is something we've done in the Let's Play, uh, in my Let's Play from start to finish. If you missed it, don't hesitate to check in the video description below. It's a perfect thing to watch before version one so that you can learn the basics. So yeah, we were already doing this, but now we're going to take this plutonium waste and we're going to make a new, uh, let's say, you know, reprocessing plan to put it into this uh, fixonium and then you're going to have even more of those power plants that are going to take this so you're going to make more energy and then no more waste also if you missed it they have moved some of the nodes deleted some added others for example they have added a lot more coal because coal is going to be important to make diamonds and we need a lot of diamonds in the new recipes so there is a big chance that your old factories may not work anymore. And they've also changed some of the few old recipes, like taking one thing out, adding one thing in, changing the numbers. They've also revamped the hard drives. Now, you will have the choice to select between two recipes when you research a hard drive, but you will also have the choice to re-roll if you're not happy with the choice in front of you. This way, it should be a lot easier to get the alternate recipe you really want. At the end of the last video last week, they also mentioned a change to the blueprints. Maybe it could be a second tier of blueprint designer which would be bigger, or maybe something completely different. Right? I would have loved, for example, personally, I know it's probably not easy at all in a game like Satisfactory, but I would have loved the blueprint to be a lot more like Captain of Industry, where, you know, I build something and then I take my blueprint button, I over over everything I want to put into my blueprint and that creates one blueprint. You know, you could build a factory, then blueprint it, and then you can rebuild it easily or you can build you know a couple of different things blueprint it and then you can rebuild it easily but we'll see you know i guess maybe in the video this week on friday we'll have more about this there's also this strange purple gas light coming from some factories in the latest few trailers which we don't really know what it is. You know, some people have said it could be an increased output and the community manager has definitely also confirmed that they will not tell us everything that is new before release. So on release, I think we will also discover maybe not a lot, but other new things. Last but not least, they have added on Steam 44 achievements. 40 of them we can see, four of them are hidden right now. You are not able to unlock them right now. You know, you can see many of these I've done before, right? I've built a space elevator, obviously. It's not unlocked. They will start unlocking with version one. But yes, there's 44 achievements. So it's going to be also cool to try to get them all. And we're definitely going to do this on our videos. So hopefully you agree with me. This is a lot. And the game was already so good. It has to be my game of the year. 
I mean, of course, you know, I could be wrong. I could be eating my words in a few weeks when maybe version one is full of bugs, or maybe in two months there is another game that comes out of nowhere, like Captain of Industry, and becomes my favorite game ever. But I think we will definitely discover very soon if I was right or not. I also know some people may say, no, it's going to be Factorio version 2.0 that's going to be better. But for me, satisfactory definitely is up there. By the way, I currently have a poll open on my YouTube page. You know, I'll put the link in the video description below where you can vote on which starting location you want me to restart on. Because again, we are definitely going to restart for a new playthrough. We have finished the last one. We got to the end of the early access. So now I want to restart from scratch. I want to experience the full story, experience, you know, the whole game as they intend intend us to do so yes do tell me where you want me to start right now it seems the dune desert is uh, winning so that's gonna be an interesting one because i actually spoiler alert i've never started in the dune desert i have started in all the other ones but never in the dune desert and also don't hesitate to tell me in the comments of this video if you prefer me to cover satisfactory version one with live stream recorded videos both and what you're most looking for you know do you want to see really the story new blueprints perfect factories I'm keen to hear your thoughts, but what's for sure is we will cover it. And let's see on this Friday if they bring even more craziness before the launch. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.